May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Cuke Audio podcast. I'm DC, Poobah of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives, doing our bit to help preserve the legacy of Shunryu Suzuki and those whose paths cross his and anything else that comes to mind. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So uh, today we have a guest, Alan Raybould. Now, uh, Alan... uh, was uh, a uh, Zen student who came to the San Francisco Zen Center uh, during the Shundu Suzuki reign. <laughs> and he'd, he'd been with um, Edo in New York, Zen Studies. He'd, he'd studied with Maizumi. I'm not sure about the timeline here. He studied with Maizumi, too. He did koans with Edo, koans with Maizumi. He has quite an interesting history of... I mean, in, in the early days, anyway, of uh, of uh, solo retreats uh, and uh, long retreats. Um, anyway, we talk about all that. Alan has uh, a site for his photography. Uh, he, he was a photographer for thirty seven years. He was a school teacher here, uh, a school teacher too. I'm. I'm not. I mean, he was a school teacher a lot. Maybe he was a photographer and a school teacher at the same time. I think so. Uh, and um, uh, his photography site is beautiful. It's great. It's very professional. It's alanraybold dot com. A l a n r a b o l d dot com. He's also uh, got uh, Alan Raybold on Instagram. Um, and he's on Facebook, too. Oh, I just wanted to tell you what's happening here in in Bali. Uh, today is what they call book, but you don't hear that anywhere. What you hear is Ogo Ogo. Um, Ogo Ogo are these giant, and a different size, uh, from medium size to really big, um, mm, sort of like statues, uh, one thing that's good is this year they have outlawed using styrofoam, but they're of uh, monsters and, you know, uh, angels. And uh, anyway, uh, they're, they're of uh, usually of some sort of character that has to do with Nyepi, which is tomorrow. Starts at 6 a.m. And uh, Nyepi uh, is when uh, the, the whole island goes dark. The airport shuts down, only place in the world. Uh, you can't have any lights on in your home. Uh, you can't leave home. Uh, and at least that's the rule now for here. The, through the years, they've changed some. Uh, you can't go out. I mean, You'll get arrested. <laughs> well, they'll shoot you back home. That, but they they do have monitors that go around the the uh, uh, Petchalang, which are like the neighborhood uh, helpers, security force. Um, every neighborhood has one, and there are ten zillion neighborhoods in Bali. But that's Bali is divided into neighborhoods, and. Uh, the Banjar is the neighborhood. Ours has a beautiful name. It's Blanjong. I love it. Um, and uh, uh, anyway, so tonight, each each um, each Banjar, each neighborhood, uh, creates um, a some sort of statue. There, there must be another word for it. Uh, you know, like uh, 
they're made out of uh, usually out of a wood frame, sometimes a metal frame. Uh, they can be, you know, uh, a plastic uh, pipe frame. And that will be covered with, uh, you know, like plaster of Paris or, you know, paper and or cloth or uh, whatever. And thank goodness, no more styrofoam. And, um, um, yeah, they're, they're fascinating. They're wonderful. Some of them are so creative. And there'll be, uh, you know, it might be something from... Uh, the from Hinduism from India the Ramayana or it can be something from local uh, folk, uh, uh, you know folk stories uh, and and what Nyepi is might be something to do with Nyepi. Uh, you know I'm never sure what's what with all this. I I don't really try to study it or keep up with it. I just watch it. Um, but Nyepi is like when the the, um, uh, the the some sorts of spirits fly over Bali, and uh, uh, you want the whole place dark so they don't see it and pass over it. So what are they here to do? I can't remember. You look, just Google it. You can read about it real easy. N Y E P I uh, Nyepi, uh, and um, Anyway, so that's happening, and uh, you know, uh, you're supposed to. The idea is you stay home and fast and meditate. Bad people eat, uh, but you're not supposed to cook. Maybe you don't have to fast, uh, but uh, y you know, there's there's no Wi-Fi. Uh, that sort of is different. Different years. Uh, but at least it'll start off with no Wi-Fi. Uh, I've seen it go all night, but then it'll come on at like midnight or something. But Nyepi is from 6 a.m. tomorrow till 6 a.m. the next day. But we have the lights off. Uh, at least the outside lights will be off tonight. And uh, but we'll have them off when we get up tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, you know, but we cheat. I'll work, you know. Because there, I don't need Wi-Fi to work. It's just a distraction a lot of the time. I mean, it's great. I love Wi-Fi because I love the Internet because it's so great for researching. And I'm always looking things up and checking on things. And the meanings of words, you know, the, stuff like that. But um, uh, I can easily work without uh, Internet. So, uh, But I'm getting this podcast ready to upload before, uh, you know, too too long because we're going to have dinner and then we're going to go out and watch the uh, these statues be paraded on uh, by by local guys, some of them by uh, local girls too, uh, and uh, uh, down the street on like uh, frames that they carry. Uh, there's nothing motorized. Uh, and uh, some of them, you know, only need four people, like a palanquin type thing. Uh, but some of them will have 20 guys on it. They'll be so big. I mean, there have been some really giant ones. And some of them are so creative. And the, the old thing was to burn them all. But I don't think they do that anymore because tourists love to see them. And, uh, oh, they're so great. Uh, but they'll all congregate down at uh, Mirza Sorry. Uh, beach uh, by by there near there and there's a big field and uh, there'll be um, you know they'll go into like an arena and go around and and they'll have they might have dancers they'll have uh, gamelan music and we have a number of times joined in on that we probably won't do that tonight I mean because this is this is our uh, t t tenth. Nyepi. Uh, and I think we missed the first one, so it's our ninth Nyepi. Oh, um, the, 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 the ones that, if, if we go see it tonight, that all congregate down at Murdasari Beach, was like 15-minute walk from here. That's just for this area. There'll be, I don't know how many all over Bali. Uh, and, uh, you know, some areas of Bali have, like, different rules and stuff. 
But they'll be just like in this uh, area of Denpasar and the southern sort of busy part of Bali. There'll be hundreds of uh, gathering spots for these. Uh, I mean, I don't know how many, uh, but um, it, it's amazing how many come just from our area. Bigger than Banjar, you know, like so maybe 20 Banjars will congregate here. Uh, anyway, it's really great. I just wanted to mention that. It's time to give Alan Raybould a call. Well, but first we'll have our pause to meditate. So um, if you're of such a mind, when you hear the bell, hit pause and meditate or whatever for as long as you wish. And then when you're ready to come back, hit unpause and we'll be here to hit the bell to end the meditation or whatever. And we'll give Alan Raybould a call. Hello. Alan. Hi. David Chadwick. Hi, David. Hi. So wh what are you up to now? What's happening? Well, I'm a meditation un instructor over at Naropa, so I deal with the contemplative psych program. Oh. And uh, it's amazing they've started a new psychedelic study um, course for therapists to use psychedelics. Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they, they can do that now. That's good. So that's a brand new thing for Naropa. So mm. I have a student coming tomorrow. And they always talk about it a little bit. Yeah. Mm. But I'm doing that, but I'm retired. I was teaching photography for 37 years. So Wow. I uh, found it. I retired from that. <laughs> you you uh, have a really beautiful site for your photography, um, appreciating the world. Uh, oh yeah, uh -huh. Alan Raybould Photography. So that's under A L I N R A B O L D dot com. Appreciating uh -huh. the world. P oh, it says PDF. Hmm. Uh, that's just the name of the page, Appreciating the World-PDF. And it's a, a book, too. It's Yeah, it is a book, yeah. Uh -huh. a, a book of photographs. Tw yeah, if you, open, if you open it, it's a whole book. Uh, w w with oh, yeah, and you can view the whole PDF. I, do, I put my books online, too. Uh yeah, the whole thing's there, and with a little bit of a resume and all that stuff. Yeah. Huh. Huh. A resume. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at that. I didn't notice that. Um, well, that's beautiful. Good lord. It um, <laughs> it looks like a painting. You know the the cover. It's really. Oh beautiful. yeah, I was on a retreat and. I'm I I had some um, onions and they rolled over into some some blue paint. I was paint, messing around with some paint, and and I picked them out of the paint and I took a picture of it. And I thought, you know, this looks pretty cool. So I just left. Yeah. Wow. Well, you were just in Portugal. What were you doing there? Oh, um, just took a. Um, I wanted to do some photography, and a friend of mine and I went, and my partner. We went and yeah, to the photos, and there uh, I posted some on Facebook, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we're in Barcelona and in Lisbon mostly, and around the Mediterranean. Mm. Uh -huh. Wow, mm. fabulous place. Well, um, love Barcelona. Yeah, I never, I never been to Spain or Portugal. Uh, just a little tiny bit over on that side of the world. 
uh, uh-huh. Germany and England, yeah. <laughs> Austria and Switzerland. And so, like, uh, that's really interesting to hear you're, you're teaching um, uh, meditation at uh, uh, Naropa. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, I know you from the Zen Center. And um, right. uh-huh. back in the Shunyu Suzuki days, uh, uh-huh. and um, mm-hmm. so what? What? What led you there? What? What got your uh, spiritual path uh, going? You know, like your what's your weight-seeking mind story? Where, where does it go back to? What's your oldest? What's I the, was I was in New York City and. Um, with some friends, and I got t- tired of taking acid, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> LSD. I was just tired of it. It's like enough is enough. I was in Central Park with some friends, and I remember hugging a tree, and I'm like, this is nice, but <laughs> I think it'd be nice to have this experience free of drugs. So I started looking into um, uh Asia, Asia, Asian ideas, religion, and whatever. And the New York Zindo happened to be not too far away. It was on the Upper East Side, but I lived not too far from there. Yeah. And I started going to um, there with Edo Roshi, and Soen Roshi was my teacher then. Mm. And I did quite a lot with that. And then. <clears throat> Wound up coming out to California and meeting Suzuki Roshi. And what year was that? Tatsuhara. What year was that? Where you came out? Tatsuhara? No, where you came to what California. Year? What year did I come to California? <laughs> I'm asking a friend of mine. <laughs> uh, that was, gosh, that was like 45 years ago. Well, um, well, where, where, More than that. Where, where did you, all right, where did you go to in San Francisco? Oh, well, I lived in a van, which I, um, because at that time I wasn't really working or anything. So I would go on long retreats in my van up in the mountains or wherever, and then I would park park outside of the uh, San Francisco Zen Center. All right, where, which what, which San Francisco Zen Center? What what street? Uh, the the one on Page. Was it Page? Yeah, the one on Page Street. Yeah. All right. So uh, if you street. arrived, mm-hmm. if you arrived after uh, we'd moved to <clears throat> Page Street, we know you'd arrived after November nineteen sixty nine. <laughs> Right. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, so, wait a minute. You said you were you. I, I want to go back to New York first. Uh, uh-huh. how, how long were were you uh, involved with? Uh, I think they called it Zen Studies or something, right? The Zen Studies Society. Yeah, Ada Roche kind of ran the show. Well, what was that like? That was, uh, it was intense. Uh, because I was started doing Cohen study, <clears throat> and um, then I finished up my Cohen study. I mean, well, I did quite a bit of it with my Zumi Roshi in Los Angeles later when I came out to California. Is, is that before you came to San Francisco? It was in between because my Zumi Roshi kept asking me to keep coming down there, so I, can't, I went down there quite a few times for Sashin, but at the same time, I got in Tassahar in there, and also Suzuki Roshi's talks at Page Street, and mm-hmm. met quite a few of the Sangha in San Francisco. So it was a little bit of a mix between my Zumi Roshi, and, which is very different, Rinzai, uh, Zen and Suzuki Roshi with Soto, very different kind of approach. Mm-hmm. Well, Mizumi Soto, he was a Soto priest. He, uh, right. But uh, he he was really big with koans. Well, he also had a Rinzai. He had a Soto lineage, a Rinzai lineage, uh-huh. and a, um, mm-hmm. a uh, uh, you know, one from Yastani Harada, 
line. Uh huh. Uh, oh yeah, I remember you, Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So what was it like uh, with uh, my zooming? Well, he drove me and drove me on uh, doing the koan mu. And um, a teacher to come over, an elder teacher from Japan to lead the session. Um, and, uh, yeah, it went into some quite good experience. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. That lasted for a while. You know, everything was all nice. <laughs> you, you so, said, and then, uh-huh. You, you said you were doing, when you came out, like it sounded like before you went to the Zen Center, you were doing retreats in your van in the woods. Yes, I did a lot of retreats in my van uh, wherever I could find. Also, I'd go to Big Sur and uh, do it from there. Um, what would you do? And I was still doing a koan, mu. Mm-hmm. The the Volga of Buddha nature and the master, yeah, you know, he answers the moo. Yeah, so I worked. I worked on that pretty intensely. Hmm. So, Just by yourself. <clears throat> yeah. Uh-huh. And then uh, I, myself, and some students from Suzuki. I mean, from uh, uh, San Francisco, we went up to place called Big River Farm. I did a three-month retreat up there, uh, practicing like eight hours a day at least. And I still was working on Moo up mm. there. Mm. And then finally went down and finished it up in San, and down in L.A. Um, and then they, he gave me another 12 koans or 15 oh. or whatever. Wow, wow. You went up to... Um Phil uh, Lewitt's Big River Farm, right? In, in, oh, is that his name? Yeah, he had a he had a, like a farm. Um, oh yeah, maybe that was his name. It's been a while. Yeah, uh, yeah. He was uh, trying. He was it started. He was like a little bit guruish. Uh, started um, uh, his own uh, like little Zen group, sort of. Uh, uh-huh. and, uh, yeah, a number of people, uh, uh, came either to Zen Center through there or, or went up there for some period. Now you went up there to do that retreat with Bob Walter and Jack Elias and, uh, right. you, you right. all were billing it as a hundred day retreat. That's what you right. were going to do. Right. Uh, right. I guess that's what we did. <laughs> yeah, Jack. Jack didn't stay for the whole thing, but Bob did. You and Bob Dor- stayed for the whole thing. And Doris Griffin. Doris did too. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh! Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh! I had no idea. Yeah, I'm still in contact with her. She's in San Francisco. <gasps> oh wow! Hey, I want you to put her me in contact with her. That is cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that is neat. Um, um, so w- w- what was the 100 Day she like? Well, <laughs> it was fine, but what happened, we were there. It was a bit foolish in some ways. It was a lot. Um, so the, the the last 30 days, we decided we were all going to split, but stay on the land and find our own way. So I built a cabin down in the woods, not a cabin, a lean-to, and finished up that last month down in a lean-to. And the walls of it were made with plastic, and I'd watch mountain lions walk by. Wow. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow. Finished, so finished it up down there, and Jack Elias went and Found a place in Doris, um, but then I think Jack took off. Yeah, yeah, yeah but he did a lot. Uh, <laughs> he did a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah he's um, well. Uh, 
What 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 did you know? You how did people at the Zen Center react to what you were doing? I think it wasn't really approved that much. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was a bit off the wall, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, really, you really going to do that? Wasn't Tassahar enough for you, you know? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think there was a bit of uh, "that's not our way" uh, exactly a- a- yes. attitude too. But uh, you might be interested to know that when Bob Walter got back. And, and you know, Bob Walter also was, um, he was, he was a very serious practitioner, but, you know, he was different. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, he was indep- he was very independent minded and he was a little bit older and he was a therapist. Right. And, uh, he, right. he came back and, you know, I, I, he said he liked to see Suzuki Roshi and, uh, he was told, I think Yvonne told him, well, you know, he's busy uh, seeing, you know, his, uh, you know, he, he got the idea of he's seeing his real students, you know, he doesn't have time for you sort of thing. But I, uh-huh. uh, uh, but anyway, so, uh, but he, he just went up there anyway, and Suzuki saw him and went, was like very excited and said, come here. Come here," he said. "How was the hundred day session?" And he said Suzuki would was just fascinated and wanted to hear about it. Oh, and and, um, oh. and, and then he said to Bob, "He said, okay, uh, Bob had had some experience. Now th- this might be another time, or it might have been that time." He said, "Okay, uh, you've you've made that breakthrough, but now you're going to have to take care of everything." And or something like that, right? And Bob said, "Well, what do you mean by that?" He said, "You got to take care of this." And he started picking things up, you know, like a pencil. You got to take care of this. You got to take care mm-hmm. of this. And you got to mm-hmm. take care of this. Anyway, right? right. Anyway, uh, Suzuki would, was uh, like I said. He was Bob said he was like really. Really curious and and not a not the slightest bit of disapproval from him. I'm glad to hear that. I had no idea. I thought we were kind of like punk rock to everybody. That was too much. And I'm really glad that Roshi thought it was good. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. I, I I've been. I was talking to Peter Coyote recently. Uh, he was after your time there. Uh, but uh-huh. you know he's he's uh, he's a Zen teacher now, and uh, uh-huh. he's he's been dealing with a, a, a problem with uh, Ed Brown in Zen Center. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, well, he did deal with it. Uh, you know, uh, uh-huh. Ed would give talks. He'd get emotional. He'd say things, and people would get upset. And finally, he was told not to, he couldn't teach at Zen Center anymore. And, you know, uh-huh. he was doing a lot of retreats and things at Green Gulch. Uh, and Peter said, well, he he, he, just, he was just off brand. <laughs> uh-huh. I love that. I love that way of looking. And, off brand. And, you know, a lot of people were upset. I said, don't worry about it. Zinsener's yeah, always changing, you know. It'll, well, it'll, yeah. it'll work out <laughs> in time. Uh, <clears throat> but, well, so, the last time I saw Suzuki Roshi, in Dokusan, um I, I was telling him all the hallucinatory visions and stuff that was going on, you know. Mm-hmm. And I, he didn't say a word. He just looked at me for a long time. And he wasn't really that interested to hear all that. <clears throat> and then he says very quietly in that small voice that he has, but the power, power behind it, he said, can you hear the cricket on my screen can you hear the way it's rubbing its legs together can you hear that sound Mm. Mm. and then he rang the bell and that was that that's good man was that at Tassahara yeah Uh wow So, so it took me two years to figure that corn out and then I'm like oh 
all these nyam, all these temporary experiences, that's nothing. Uh, let it go. Mm, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, he'd do that with people who had experiences. Like, uh-huh. <laughs> like Ken Sawyer had this experience on the bridge, him and Suzuki, and then they just, Suzuki just disappeared. And it's just like, uh, you know, he had a, some sort of epiphany there and he brought it up in Doksa with Suzuki. And Suzuki said, uh-huh. oh, very good. Uh, how's your work going? Uh, <laughs> 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 well, then many years later, when I met Trump or Rinpoche here in Boulder, which I, well, I wound up here. I hope yeah. I'm not jumping ahead too no, far. No, 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 that's all right. So in the same kind of vein, I, he's like, so what's up? I said, well, I'd like to go on a lifetime retreat. You know, I didn't say a cave. I was in, still in that romantic mood. Mm-hmm. Um, he said, do you need a good job? mm mm-hmm. Mm. And I became a high school teacher within a month. Really? Really? Yeah, just kind of some some kind of a juju there. I don't know, or maybe it just happened, but whatever. So and I stayed with it for 37 years. Mm. Did you do <laughs> a lot of... The, go on. It became the path for me. But what became the path? Teaching school? It became the path, yeah. Yeah. So, spiritual path. Did you teach high school a lot? Uh, every day, you know, five days a week, yeah, for years. Ah. But the first job, which I had for 18 years, I also taught Buddhism to hundreds of kids because it was a very open, it was Evergreen High School, and the, the social studies teacher would say, well, why don't you come in and talk about Zen? I was like, sure. The religious studies teacher would say, well, why don't you come in and talk about meditation? The psychology teacher would say, why don't you come in and talk about different states of mind? <laughs> so it was really hilarious. And you know, where was uh, Evergreen? Into, uh, Evergreen is uh, uh, 35 miles from Boulder. Oh. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway... Trump or Rinpoche's suggestion, uh, it's funny how it turned out. Yeah. So, and so, like, even back then, you were you were uh, teaching meditation, Buddhism, whatever, in different right. ways, and you're, uh, you're doing it right now. Mm. Yeah, and the kids would come down for, it was against the law probably, but they would come down for personal instruction. I'd make sure the door was always open. And um, I would, I stopped doing it after a while. I thought it was not wise, but I did do that for a while. But I wound up doing group meditation more, do a whole class at once. Yeah. We were all together. We were safer. Yeah. You, it's not good to be with kids that age alone, you know. You're smart, man. And the door open, that is smart. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. I've talk, I, I remember talking to, to a guy. He became, uh, he got a job as the assistant principal in a high school. And he said the first thing he did when he arrived was have the door taken off. Ah, wise. Huh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's it, it, anyway. I understand that, and you know the. It's interesting the the whole thing about the uh, private uh, interview, um, uh-huh. which is so big in in the modern uh, Zen world, but right. I, and and I don't know. I'd I'd have to ask people who know better, like uh, Bill Porter. You know, Red Pine be interesting to ask him that, that would be a really good question for him uh it is um uh you know the stories uh in the, a lot a lot of the stories back back in earlier zen 
are uh, a group. You know, the person's in a group, and they're asking their uh-huh. questions in a group. And koan, oh, I think it means public question. Oh. Uh, uh-huh. If I remember right. Uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, so uh, I'm not saying uh, that I have some feeling there should or shouldn't be that, but, um, uh, you know, private interviews. But I, I don't there, – there have been teachers who didn't do that at all. I was in a Vipassana retreat uh, led by a, a woman here, a renegade – uh, woman in, you know, in the Myanmar tradition, uh, she's Indonesian, uh-huh. and um, mm-hmm. she uh, she didn't. What what they were doing in the other Vipassana retreats is we'd have like a group of five or six talk. It was always Myanmar monks, uh-huh. right? Talk with them uh-huh. uh, mm-hmm. like three times every other day or something. Three or four times, but usually it'd be about three. Uh-huh. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, she didn't even do that. She said, well, "You can't stop people just asking about their personal problems." And uh, she said, "That's not what. It, it should just ask about your meditation or talk about that." And they'd always say that. Uh huh. Uh-huh. And uh, but um, anyway. Uh, uh, so, um, uh, so what, what, what's your, what's your earliest memory of coming to, to Zen Center? Uh, let's see, earliest memory. Well, it was over when it was a church. It wasn't on Page Street. Oh, a, so go to. We were upstairs. Yeah. yeah we were upstairs. Yeah. And I remember, like, I was so glad to be out of New York for a while. And um, it was very peaceful. And I thought, yeah, this is great. I loved it. Yeah. Mm. And uh, it was such a different flavor than Zendo in New York. Um, Much softer. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Do, Do you remember any people? Uh, that was so far. Wow. Uh, mm, Reb? No, what was his name? Reb. Reb came in, uh, 68. I think I remember him. Yeah. Yeah. Because he he couldn't miss him. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. He, had a, he had a kind of energy that was strong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well said. Uh, I do remember him, yeah. And uh, uh, do you remember, was Richard Baker around when you came? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, he was. Well, that then was you came in 68. Yeah, he was barely around. That was more on Page Street. Well, no, no. It, I it, remember him. He left for Japan in like mm, October of 1968. And he didn't come uh-huh. back until November of 1971, right before Suzuki died. Uh huh. Oh, you know, it wasn't him. It was that other Roshi would come. I'm sorry, I got him mixed up. The Yas- uh, not Yasutani. Oh, Tatsugami. One of them, yeah. There was another Roshi who would show up and, and for lectures and stuff. Well, you mean the one that did the uh, practice periods at Tassahara? Uh, I remember him. That's yeah. Tatsugami. Mm-hmm. Do you mean Katagiri? Katagiri was on Page Street. The other yeah. guy in Tatsuhara is the one that smoked cigarettes. Uh, oh, Yoshimura. Is that what it was? He was handsome. <laughs> uh, and, um, 
Yeah, he smoked. I know. I'd bum cigarettes from him. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and uh, he was. Um, he was. Uh, I, I really liked him. He, he, he was real no nonsense. Uh, he. Uh-huh. He. He. Um, I was talking to him. He, he. He would just stay in a cabin, like the rest mm-hmm. of us. He didn't have a, a Tommy room, and uh-huh. uh, he showed me. Um, I don't know why he, t- well, he took his old case off, and he was just wearing a, a black one. I said, why are you wearing uh-huh. a black? Okay, so, uh, because you're a teacher. Uh, but no, he, uh, well, he had a yellow one, and he wore it sometimes. That sort of light shows you have transmission. Uh, uh-huh. Maybe he took uh-huh. off. All right, he took off a yellow case. That's it. And uh, I asked him, that's it. I <laughs> asked him, what's the significance of the yellow case? <clears throat> And, you know, we had this idea, you get that, means you're enlightened. He said, uh, he said, oh, you know, all the all the monks get this. They all, they, they, you know, they, they, they almost all have transmission from their father before they come to age. Or whatever. <laughs> he said, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, and he said, then he opened up a drawer and he had a, he had a brown one. Uh, I said, oh, you've got a brown robe. Uh, yeah, he said, yeah, I don't wear it. He said, um, uh-huh. uh, because that shows uh, uh, like a higher level. I said, well, well, well uh, uh, how many levels are there? He said, there's 10 levels. Uh, but, you, you know, oh. you don't necessarily do every one. He said, my father was a big shot. So when I went to AHG, uh I was ordained uh, right away. Away there, I mean, he was already ordained as a monk. He said, "But I was, I was given the highest level with brown robe by the abbot of A.H.G." He said, "It didn't uh-huh. mean anything." Uh-huh. He said, uh, "It was uh-huh. just connections." <laughs> uh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's honest guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, well, I've, I've continued on. Uh, once Trump or Rinpoche died, um, was, um, I see it was within about a year that Sogni Rinpoche showed up, and I I got to he stayed with us for a while in our apartment. Who our townhome? Uh, Sogni Rinpoche. How do you spell that? T S O K N Y I. Oh, I don't know about him. He's he's Toko Ujin's son, mm-hmm. and his his brother is uh, um, Mingyur Rinpoche, mm. and the, he's a Dzogchen teacher. So uh huh. Uh huh. I've been with him. We've been with him for twenty four years. Oh my. My, uh, what what brought you to Boulder? And when did you go to Boulder? I uh, came to Boulder. What year was that? Seventy five. Hey, who's that? How do they know? Uh, <laughs> my partner. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, seventy five. Now, how does he know? Just because you talk to him and he's, he's he remembers better than you. Yes, much better. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, all right. Well, tell him thanks. Uh, yeah, he said thanks. <laughs> yeah, no, 75. Yeah, I finally got out of New York City. I was really glad to come to Boulder. And then there was Trump or Rinpoche and went through that. Yeah. Went to Japan with him. Well, it was a whole group of us. It wasn't just us. Yeah. And he was a piece of work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any any particular memory there? Uh, 
Uh, there's so many. I'm trying to think. Uh, what, one will do. Yeah. Um, I went in to see him for a personal interview, and I had all kinds of more stories of, um, you know, temporary experiences, cooking. Mm-hmm. I think he thought I'd been over it by now. Anyway, <clears throat> I came in. And he was sitting with his back to me, and he would not turn around, and so I finally split. <laughs> huh. He just didn't want to hear it, hear it anymore. So, hmm. and that was a very powerful teaching. And uh, there's a lot of lot of times when I first saw him. Actually, is at a church in New York City. Um, this might sound too trippy, but I'll say it anyway. I went and sat in, down in the church. About what church? Where it was downtown. It was they were they were just renting it for his uh, talk. Oh, okay. He was giving a, a public lecture. Yeah. yeah. And I came in. I was quite excited. I heard about him because I'd already been to India, trying out the Hindu thing, and. Uh, after I left Zen, I went to India looking for something. Mm. And that's where I found Trump Arum, uh, Trump Jay's book, uh, uh, Meditation in Action. I thought, oh, I don't need to be in India. I should find this guy. And he was in New York. Mm. So I went to New York, found out he's going to be teaching there. So I went and I said, God damn, the place was really packed. And he came in, he sat down, and I'm watching there, and he disappeared. Mm. And then he came back into form again. And then, uh, this is actually true, and then it was just all gold lights shooting out of every direction. And I'm like, okay, I think this is a sign. This is a pretty good one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So and I've never talked to about that very much. But... Uh, and then after that, that never happened again. Nothing like that ever again. Mm. Except when he would give lectures here, he would teach uh, um, in the summers, and a huge. That's when Baba Ram Dass came out here, and all these people. Mm. Um, he would sit up on his um, wasn't a throne, his chair, on, but he on the stage. Sometimes he would. There would be so much uh, radiation of light; it was kind of outrageous. But sometimes it wasn't there at all. So it came and went. Hmm. Hmm. Do you think the um, the came and went part was uh, with you or him? Uh, me, mm. probably. It was probably always like that. I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. well, uh, but, uh, if if by when you say me, all right, then I would interpret that to mean sometimes you were sensitive to it and sometimes you weren't. Yeah, I think that's the best way to put it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Because you know when you're with them, uh, he was like a big mirror. You. you he he could see more than you knew about yourself, and it was very disarming and and outrageous and scary. And a lot of people were scared to death of him. Mm. Mm. It was too much. Mm. And um, but somehow you would, you know hang in there. <laughs> mm. It was quite a ride, that guy. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that teacher shouldn't say guy. That yeah, teacher. what do you think about the way he, like, you know, died so young because of his uh, drinking? Well, you know, I uh, I don't know. I have no idea what that was. Yeah, I mean, uh, I know. I'm, I'm just, yeah. to me, you know, everybody would have liked for him to have hung around longer. Um, sure would. I mean, didn't he, uh, didn't it like get in the way 
of his teaching that he wasn't going to be there? Uh, well, he said, he, one time he said that he liked to drink because he could see Vajogini better. That's one of the deities in Tibetan yoga. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that's the only time I ever heard him talk about it. Mm. Or, or he would say, all you hippies smoking pot all the time, why don't you drink sake because that's getting high from the earth. Mm. Mm -hmm. So then we would have these drinking lessons where you would drink and supposedly not too much and not get pla pla plastered. <laughs> And it was all very strange, and I didn't like it. I'm like, oh, this is too weird. But uh, anyway, you got you got used to it. Did yeah. you? Are you are you uh, a drinker? I mean, do you are you a person that was attracted to alcohol, or what? What's your history with alcohol? No, I'd I'd go to these. We did these dotins. I went to a few of them. They were month long meditations. The first one I went to, I. I cried for the first week because of all the drinking going on. And uh, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing here. This is really weird. But were you drinking? No, but then later, you know, being part of the Sangha, yes, you did. That's a while ago, though. I don't drink anymore. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I, we all did. Yeah. Uh, Henry Schaefer, you, you might remember him. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh -huh. He was very close with Trumpa, especially very early on. Uh, uh -huh. Trumpa told him, uh, Henry said, well, I, I can't drink because, uh, you know, it can kill me. I've, I've got a bad liver. And Trumpa said, no, it won't hurt you if you drink with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, uh, gee, really? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> he was a man of many mysteries that you'll never. Um, I have no. Uh, yeah. 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 It's just unbelievable. But like what? You know. Well, um, we, we, you know, um, a lot of people who were from the, the Zen Center realm, got into Trungpa because uh, uh, he came to Zen Center uh, uh, a number of times, you know. Uh, some of them met him at Tatsaharam when he first came in 1970, mm -hmm. and he gave a few talks at uh, Page Street mm -hmm. at, at uh, Suzuki's request. And Suzuki and he were clearly very close. And uh, Suzuki approved of student his students leaving. He didn't he didn't right. want his students leaving going to other teachers. He didn't want them going to my Zoomy. But uh, when Trungpa, uh -huh. he felt all right about it. Uh, yeah, was, Trungpa Rinpoche said his best friend in America was Suzuki Roshi. Yeah, he said that a few times at a public talks. So. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I think Suzuki felt, you know, he couldn't handle all the people. And there were a lot of them. Yeah, well, in the first place, the, the, the numbers got too great. I mean, his right, first right. year, you know, before Tassahara, it was manageable. Uh, and, yes, and he could right. relate to everybody. But then once we got Tassahara, it was very upsetting to some of his oldest students uh, uh -huh. and uh to to have lost that intimate uh experience with him but also right. it wasn't just that it was that he he felt he it, it, that he couldn't that there were so many people that had you know such uh, such uh you know situation or problems or that that he felt that Trungpa could d deal with them better. That Trungpa was more in tune with uh, what was happening in American culture, and uh, that that's that's right. Yeah, I I would I could see that definitely. Yeah, 
Yeah. Because he set up all kinds of situations for different types of people. Like one, he started uh, for a flower arrangement. Yeah. One was photography, a uh, mix song. Mm. He had another one with the uh, the guards, the uh, kusung, mm-hmm. for people more, uh, I don't know where the word aggressive, more forceful people. Uh, uh, yeah, he, he understood all these different styles. And calligraphy. And, oh, yeah, of course, that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, he... Yeah, he understood, yeah, well, tons of our friends here in Boulder, you know, they were with Suzuki Roshi, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I went to Boulder, oh, a few times. I'd, I'd go, you know, I'd, I'd go from uh, California to Texas, uh, where I come uh-huh. from, Fort Worth, and I'd go through Boulder, I'd go through Santa Fe, Taos, at Boulder, I had a lot of friends in all three of those places. Uh, and um, uh-huh. Boulder, I remember arriving once in Boulder, and everybody was very involved with uh, Ripchey and uh, uh, the, you know, what was happening there. Uh, and you know, I'd stay with Bob Halpern. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> and R. Jack Elias. And uh, Bob was mm-hmm. so busy with mm-hmm. Trump and what was happening, it was better to stay with Jack. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Jack wasn't. Uh, Jack's wife, what was her name? Robin Roberta. Uh, was was uh, in on the the. She was more in, involved with uh, the, the 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 inner group, but Jack wasn't. He was. Uh, he, he, right. he was always uh, sort of a little on the outside, and uh, right. uh, yeah. but Alan Marlowe, I saw Alan Marlowe, and immediately uh, he goes, "Oh, well, you're you're here. We have to have a party. Let's see." And he just gets on the phone and starts going. And the next thing I know, I'm at a party at Alan's, and he's got an Everclear punch, which is insane. <laughs> And uh, and there's like 30 people or something that I know at the party, you know. Right. Uh, <laughs> probably not that many, but uh, that's the way it seemed. Uh, yeah, the yeah the early days here when Rinpoche was here, uh, there were parties every night. Yeah, yeah, and outside the Boulderado Hotel. Uh, uh, they were every in people's homes, and yeah, and then and then they would all change when the Karmapa came. Then it all became getting ready for the visit for Karmapa, uh. painting and fixing and gold leafing and sewing and you know so mm. uh, many different periods of activity. <laughs> uh huh. Uh-huh. I I just remember uh, a summer. Sitting outside with people in front of the Boulderado, and and Loring Palmer worked at the Boulderado. You know, he was right. at the uh-huh. desk there. Uh, right. Uh-huh. Anyway, uh, yeah, it was quite a scene in Boulder. It, it was a scene. It, yeah, it was called the scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Trump invited me. He wanted me to. Uh, Go teach meditation at a seminar, uh, but I just felt it was you know I'm too indulgent. I felt uh, uh, I, I was indulgent enough, and I I, I I thought I'd better stay, uh, keep it to uh, brief visits. <laughs> uh huh. Ah, ah. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Um. Ah. Yeah. Um. So now you, 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 all right. So you, you were at Zen Center and you were sort of in and out of Zen Center. You were at Tassahara and you were with Mizumi and you went up to Big River Farm and did that. Uh, right. Were you, were you involved with Zen Center uh, after uh, Suzuki died? Uh, no. 
No, but then I think I was, let's see, off to India after that. Well, there was my Zumi, see, my Zumi Roshi bath. No, that was, that was uh, I left, that's right. No, then I went to India on my own. Where'd you go? I wound up first in Bombay, which is Mumbai. And yeah. I was thinking I needed a break from Zen. Um, I just was looking for something a little different. I didn't know what I wanted. Yeah. And I went to different ashrams and this, that, and the other, and nothing was really clicking. And then somebody told me after I'd been there two months at least, and I got pretty sick at some of the ashrams of eating the food, which was a mistake. Uh, said, why don't you just go up to Dharamsala, up by the Dalai Lama? Maybe you should look into maybe some Tibetan stuff, yeah. you know. I'm like, uh, yeah, really? I, yeah, he said, no, you should do it. I'm like, oh, all right. So I did that, and then I met um, Lama Tipton Yeshe up there, and he put me in retreat for a month. Mm. And that's when I, I, I borrowed some books out of their library, and one of them was... Uh, Meditation in Action with Trump or Rinpoche. Mm. Mm. And that opened that whole thing out from being up there on retreat. That was like and, the uh, early 70s, huh? Right. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow. So that retreat was intense and good and whatever, but whatever. But anyway, I, that book kind of really like, yeah, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the states. I think this is it. But, but you went back to the states. You went to New York, though. Yeah, I, that's where. He, um, well, a friend of mine, Julia Runk. Um, oh, Julia uh, Runk! Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, she's yeah. the, the sister of Jane uh, Schneider. Jane Runk. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, she she invited me, and I could stay at her place, and and she coaxed me out of Boulder. Uh, I'm sorry, out of New York. Um. Um. So anyway, so yeah, wound up after India, then to New York, and then that's where Julie put me up, Runk, and then she got me to move to to Boulder. That's right. She's like, well, you're you're tired of New York, so why don't you go to Boulder then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, well, where are you from? Where were you born? Uh, Nashville. Yeah, because I don't hear any East Coast there. Uh, No, I uh, grew up in Nashville. mm, Uh, Wow. What was that like? (laughs) <laughs> um, it was a mixed bag <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, it turned into quite nice I mean my parents did quite well and anyway it was very comfortable being there yeah mm-hmm. but um, I it wasn't, I mean, I was an artist. I was a painter then, and I had some shows. I had a show at the Parthenon. I had a mentor who was getting me different galleries and stuff. So I had that little run for a while. Yeah. When you say the Parthenon, uh, the Parthenon where? Oh, Nashville built a replica of the Parthenon in Athens. Hmm. Ah. It's a total rep- replica, and they have galleries in the downstairs area. And he was able to pull all these strings and got me a show there. So my last bit of uh, Nashville before I moved to New York was a, a very nice time being an artist, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you liked Nashville? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I liked Fort Worth. I see. You know, I miss Fort Worth. <laughs> oh, is that where you were, uh, yeah. grew up? Yeah. 
Um, oh. oh, yeah. I, my friends, I miss my friends in Fort Worth just like I miss my friends in, Saf- in you know, well, wherever they are. A lot of them are in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, uh, but um, uh, why did you go to New York? Um, let's see. Well, I went to New York from India. Oh, um, you didn't go to when I was in. No, no, no. But you went to New York. You were in New York before India. You were in New York before you went to Zen Center. Yeah, and then let's see. I uh, well, I know I left. I finally got out of New York and came to Boulder. Yeah, but wait a minute. And, and, wait a minute. You were in Nashville mm-hmm. when you were very young. Right, right. And then you went and from Nashville. From Nashville, then I went to New York City. Right. And I became a photographer. Worked in a photography studio as an assistant. Oh. So, so I lived there for a while, and that's where I took all that LSD and 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 got tired of it and decided I wanted to do something else. Then I met Ado Roshi uh-huh. and So and Roshi at the Zen Studies Society. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well. And, uh, yeah, how'd you like Soen? Soen Roshi, I loved him. Yeah. Yeah. And he somehow found out I was doing on these, I was a hermit in the woods sometimes, uh, meditating. He found out about it. And every time he'd see me, he'd go, good. <laughs> That's all he'd say. <laughs> good. <laughs> um. I loved him. He's great. You you know your your trip about retreats. Look, you just talked about when you you, you were doing them even before you went to Zen studies. I mean, it, it's like uh, all your life you've been uh, you have been prone to wanting to go on retreats. I mean, you said someone found mm-hmm. out that you like to be a hermit in the woods, so that. Are you mean even before you got involved uh, with Zen? No, when I was involved with Zen, I found different ways where I could leave the city and go off into the mountains. And I would find different people that would let me, let me use part of their land. They would have a deserted. So I stayed in somebody's well house. I mean, wherever I could find. But I didn't have much money at the time. So yeah. And I would do retreats on my own, sometimes freezing to death, but still trying to persevere. <laughs> well, where'd you get the idea of doing a retreat by yourself? Uh, reading about different, uh, that's, that's a good one. I'm not sure. Because um, it just came. Yeah, I've never had that urge. I mean, I've done them with, with, uh, other people, I like to work alone, uh, but, uh-huh. Uh-huh. uh, and I sit a lot. I love sitting by myself, but to sit all day or to go on a retreat like that, never have I been attracted to that. But you were, you have been. I mean, it's part of your makeup. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I yeah, very much so. Yeah. That's interesting, you know. It's sort of foreign to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, well, they're powerful. I mean, they're they're difficult in the first few days. You know, it's hmm. it's always a little bit hard, particularly when you first start doing them. But then, once you settle in, the solitude is so powerful that um, the meditation really changes. Uh, it can. Yeah. Yeah. It can. A lot of my friends, they'll go on retreat, and they're back in a day. Yeah. yeah. Halpern went they're on like, a retreat. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, I can't do that. Yeah, Halpern went on a retreat, uh, when, <laughs> you know, when he was involved with Trump and all that. Uh, uh-huh. He, he um, I, I can't, I don't, you know, I never asked him about this, because I talk to him every now and then. Uh and uh, this would be a good one to ask him about. But he was in some cabin 
somewhere doing a retreat, and it was involved with uh, the the Dar- the what were they called? What was this group called? I mean, it was Shambhala, but it was Dharma. Uh, oh. uh, you mean before Shambhala, it was Karma Zone? Well, Karma Zone's a place. And no, but like was- the name of the group was like. Uh, I forget. Uh, it, but anyway, uh, I heard that, that that he's in this cabin in the woods, and that uh, p- people uh, who were like a mile away would say there was this crazed uh, uh, monk <laughs> coming down and, and uh, talking obsessively. To them, or something like that. That's the image I get. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I'm so used to solitary retreats, God. I've been doing them for a long time. (laughs) Yeah, well, that's that's impressive. You get used to it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. First day, first day is always a little much because all of a sudden you're really face to face all of a sudden with everything. Yeah, it's, it's still there. Some of it's still there, of course. Stuff, you know. Yeah. But um, then, you know, by the third day, you know, it's pretty cool. Mm. Do you remember Angie Runyon, who was at Zen Center? Oh, that name. Did she come out here? Yeah. She's in Creststone, I think. And um, Yes. Yeah. She, yeah, she, right. She, with some teacher... I maybe who teaches at Creststone, uh, put, put uh, Sogni Rinpoche. Who? Oh, it could be my teacher. He teaches in Creststone every summer. Uh huh. Well, she she got on a three year uh, solitary retreat in Creststone. Oh, three year retreat. Yeah. Oh yeah. That usually you do that in a group. She did a solitary. Wow. Well, you know, I don't know the details because Angie's very private. You know, she's not somebody uh-huh. who's going to uh, talk to me about all that. She'll say hello, uh, but yeah. um, uh-huh. uh, but you know, I would hear about it. So uh, I'm not sure, but uh, anyway, she became a, a some sort of teacher in that uh, whatever lineage that was. And uh, uh-huh. uh, Kagyu or Nyingma. Yeah. One of, one of the two, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, three year retreat. Uh, well, I signed up for it, actually. My partner and I, we both signed up for it. We were going to do it. And the nuns started calling. It's like, when are you coming? It's time. <laughs> it's up at Gampo Abbey. I'm kidding. Canada, mm. and uh, my sciatica was kicking in from doing a full lotus all those years under Edo Roshi's uh, tutelage, <laughs> and my sciatica was like, no, I don't think the three-year retreat's going to work out. Mm. My body was saying, no, no, no. Uh-uh. Mm. So, but yeah, the three-year retreat, I know a lot about it. You do it in a group, and it's uh, progress. You progress through these different practices each each year. Ah, well, and, maybe that's what she did because I I never uh-huh. I would just hear about it, you know. So I I don't really yeah. know her story. Um, yeah. So like you when when you went from uh, when you went to Boulder, you know. Uh, you told uh, Trump uh, something you were talking about wanting to go on a retreat or something. And he said, get a job. So you said uh, like a week later you were teaching high school. That means you went to college. Where did you go to yes. college? I went to East Tennessee University. I got my master's there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And uh, fine art. I was a painter. For years, oh, I used to paint paint twelve hours a day. My gosh, yeah. And then when I got into Buddhism, I realized I can't paint eighteen hours a day when I'd rather be sitting. 
so I'll just do photography instead. Huh. Huh. Well, you're a disciplined person. Uh, I, I admire <laughs> that. That's pretty good. Well, um, well look, anyway. is there anything we've missed along the way here? <laughs> they, well, uh, not really. I, I'm kind of. It's interesting to go back to all these memories. It's like a dream. Mm hmm. But uh, it did happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, let's look at your your practice, your whole lifetime of practice, and all these retreats and all this focus. Um, and uh, uh, how, how has how has it left you? I mean, how do you do? You feel any benefit from it? Well, absolutely. Um, I'm doing what's now called the Six Yogas of Naropa, and um, yeah, it's it's um, difficult, it's complicated, but once you get the hang of it, and then Lanelle Jones um, did a three year retreat, and she's also very helpful, and then Sogni Rinpoche, the teacher now, has also helped me with it. Um, so what it does, it gives you uh, cheerfulness. And uh, a um, uh, noticing things, everything, pretty much. You notice, you notice that you're, you you uh, appreciate the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, hey, there's your there, and we we come full circle back to your website and book. Right. Now, can, can your book, yeah. can right. your book, uh, appreciating. The World Photographs by Alan Raybould be purchased? Can somebody uh, buy sure, it? Sure, sure. Yeah. Where? Can they buy it on Amazon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, but, you know, when the uh, COVID hit, right when I finished the book and my um, woman who was going to put it up, uh, all in the market and got take it or museums. Um, she died. <laughs> How'd she die? So the book just kind of sit here. So people. Did she die um, of COVID? She stopped eating. Huh? Oh, she stopped uh, eating, which she had a serious COVID. problem. Yeah. She, something happened, but she was, and so the, the whole publishing thing didn't happen so much. So if, I've sold the book around Boulder. People ask me, "Can you can I have a copy?" And I'm like, "Sure." So they sell it, you know. So you know, but I haven't thought about it too much. But I still have, I have a, I have a bunch left. Yeah. Well, is it available uh, online? I don't see on on the site for it. I don't see a place for buy the book. Yeah, at the very back, it says, if you would like to get in touch with me, um, it gives a way to send me a message, then if they're really contact. interested, then I can. Yeah, there's contact. Well, you're, then you're, I, could send, I could send them the book. Yeah, so it's not available through standard, it's not on uh, Amazon. Alan? Yeah, you know, I, I'm going to put it on there, I think. Yeah. I've just been lazy. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I understand. Uh -huh. I understand. Yeah. Uh, so, um, well, look. Uh, uh, I may put it on Amazon. You know, uh, so we got back to the book by your saying that being involved with practice has made it where you can appreciate the world. I think that's that's saying it pretty well. Uh, okay. It becomes much brighter and you notice it much more through practice, I think. Yeah. Cause yeah. It helps pull the cobwebs off for you. Mm. Off for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know somebody asked me, actually, 
uh, my oldest son, Kelly, he asked me something about uh, Zazen and meditation. And uh, uh, it's hard to say anything about it. But uh, I remember I was talking to a Tassara, a, a, a district attorney from uh, Santa Rosa, and I've spent a lot of time living in uh, – actually, he lived in Sebastopol where I was living. Uh, mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I talked to him about prosecuting people for drugs and this and that, and he was saying mainly they were mainly mm-hmm. concerned about speed, you know, methadrine and stuff. Oh, yes, of course. And, oh, my God. And then he said, I'd hate to think who I – would have turned out to be if I hadn't taken LSD. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, that, that's sort of the way I feel about meditation. Uh, mm-hmm. I, 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 well, I, I don't, I don't have, I, I wouldn't state it negative. Like, I just am very grateful that my life took me on the path it did and it's but it's hard you know it's hard to uh speak about it or say anything in particular right right no i'm extremely grateful too yeah you know all my naropa kids i've been doing this 14 years i asked them first thing how did you get here and they say right away psychedelics yeah yeah, yeah, and Suzuki had that experience. That's why he would not, he, he would, he would not put down psychedelics. He, 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 you know, he wanted his students to forget about it, but he knew how important it was uh, on uh, getting them interested in in finding a path, their path. Yeah, yeah very much so. Yeah, yeah, because otherwise. People that haven't had that experience and then they get into meditation, they don't last a lot of long, a long time. A lot of you know, not always, but they drop off. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, okay, Alan. Uh, uh, do you have anything you'd like to say in conclusion? <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks for uh, arranging this. I know it's taken a while. We finally got it together. And yeah. I appreciate your uh, patience getting this put together. I I wasn't sure a podcast or uh, uh, what was going on really, but I, is this um, like uh, something you do on a regular basis? Or? Oh, yeah. I, 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 oh. Uh, I've done... Uh, Oh, this is the fourth year I started during COVID. I only I put up one uh-huh. a week now. I just put up one, oh. uh, uh, one of these uh, Zen oriented uh, podcasts a week. Uh, uh-huh. I put it up on the weekend. Uh-huh. Uh, yours mm-hmm. will go up in two or three months. I'm I'm way ahead. Of time. Uh-huh. I'm talking to three different people this week. Uh, oh, oh wow. so, um, uh, yeah, I love it, man. I love it. And, yeah. Yeah. You're, you're good. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not interested in, uh, uh, I'm, I'm just interested in talking to people who've been on the path or been, you know, been around that sort of thing. And hear what they say, and just get a big. It's like a a collage of yeah of yeah, stories, yeah. and uh, I'm not interested yeah. in it being uh, teaching, you know, or being enlightening uh-huh. or uh-huh. anything like. That. I just say, what 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 are all, what are all these people like? You know, where they come from, where they go, uh, what they get out, right, of, right, you know. And uh, mm-hmm. I, I love mm-hmm. it. I get a lot out of it. Uh, 
Yeah. 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 And you're definitely uh, one of the unique uh, uh, critters that uh, have passed through. <laughs> well, appreciating the world, of course, means people too. I mean, I mean, you know, having more compassion goes without saying. We know about that one. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, and that's something I feel that that um, you know, I I think people have a tendency to wonder. Am I compassionate? Um, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, I, my feeling is that that we we try to live life so as to uh, evoke compassion out of ourselves. And one way that's one way to do it is is to sort of pray for it. You know, uh, is. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I sort of assume I'm not compassionate and that uh, reminding myself every day or that compassion is maybe our deeper, our true being, but we have to be evoking it all the time consciously, I think, in our yeah, practice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's benefiting benefiting others. Yeah. And uh, it's a big deal in Indonesia to say uh, uh uh, Samoga Simwa Hidu Bara Bahagia. I uh, may all beings be happy. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Well, in Bali, anyway. But but um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, I I've talked about it with Muslims and Hindus and Buddhists. There's all of them here, and Christians. Oh. Everybody understands it. But why do we say may all beings be happy? I think because we're we're trying to evoke that out of ourselves that we need to make an effort because um, yes uh, it yeah. needs help I think uh, yes absolutely yeah. <laughs> anyway yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, all right that's the ticket yeah <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. It's been good talking with you, and and uh, yeah. you take care. All right. Well, thanks a lot. It's yeah. It's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Have a good. Yeah. You have too. a good rest of the. Is it daytime there? Uh, yeah. Right now it's eleven twenty-two a.m. and where you are, uh-huh. it's. Uh, 9.22 p.m. No, yeah, no, it's 8.22 like yeah. p.m. <laughs> no, it's 8, eight yeah. yeah, yeah. 8.22 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Well, well thanks a lot. <laughs> okay. Well, take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. So thanks a lot, Alan. Uh, that's really interesting. Uh, wow, what a what a life, and how uh, so impressive how you and so many others um, have, are still uh, practicing, teaching, uh, doing things, you know, just uh, that are Im- impressive. I'm I'm uh, I salute you. So uh, this has been a Cuke Audio. Podcast. I'm DC Puba of Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives, coming to you from Sleepy Sanur with Dog and Bandita, Feline Manis, and dear lovely Kudrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.